So then next up is Diana Stört from the Museum für Naturkunde uh, Berlin. And uh, she will be talking about the transcription workshop, a digital participative format in the Museum for Naturkunde in Berlin. And the floor is yours and the presentation is up. Yeah, hello. Uh, thank you very much for the opportunity to speak here today. So, as you said, my name is Diana and I'm uh, working um, at the Natural History Museum in Berlin as a historian in the research project. And um, what I would like to do today, I would uh, like to talk about my experience of doing a citizen science uh, online transcription project with Transcribos. And um, uh, it is called the Transcription workshop and that's the name of it and I would like to introduce you to this uh, citizen science uh, project. Um, here you can uh, see uh, uh, different doc documents from the archive of the museum. What? Oh, there is a, yeah. Maybe, oh, it's the microphone. Uh, okay, maybe we could do it. Is it better now? Hopefully. Should I start again? No, no, no I, yeah, I think it's fine. It's difficult to hear. Yes, no, it should be better. <laughs> okay, so, uh, sorry for this. Uh, but um, yes, I was talking about the idea of the project uh, of the transcription workshop at the Museum für Naturkunde Berlin. Um, yes, here you can see uh, different documents from the archive and you see uh, the material is very diverse. And uh, we have about uh, 40,000 files, and this means not pages, but files um, from the 19th and 20th century. Um, letters, research reports, uh, collection catalogs, inventories, uh, most of them are administrative documents. That's the same in uh, in my uh, um, in my experience with the Zoom. <laughs> but should I wait? So yeah. Yes. Let's just let Zoom be Zoom. Oh, what should we do? Yeah. Okay. Uh, where was I? <laughs> Uh, okay, I wanted to say that this material is very important, not only for the uh, history of our institution, but uh, for the um, history of science in general. And, um, but only, as you all know, only a few experts can read uh, current, um, the uh, handwritten uh, or citalin. And um, that was the reason for our idea to engage volunteers to help to transfer these handwritten scripts into modern formats. And we wanted to combine their work uh, with um, research projects of the museum. For this, we started a digital format on Zoom with the beginning of the pandemic in 2020. And we started with Word and Dropbox. Um, and we started with my own research project, but now we support different research projects um, of the museum, uh, which are working with uh, this material from the archive. And for this higher approach, uh, we implemented uh, Transcribus at the end of uh, 2021, last year, with the help of Günther Mühlberger. And um, yes, now we have this uh, citizen science project. And I wanted to tell you something. This is not working anymore. Hmm? Where's the mouse? <laughs> this is very confusing. And now, is it working? Yeah. Okay, <laughs> so, um, so I'm the teacher uh, uh, of this um, uh, format, the transcription workshop. And so I would like to tell you some ideas of the project. Um, my aim is to create a win-win situation for both sides. Um, I offer beginner courses to learn reading uh, the uh, uh, current uh, and Zutalin, 
and I give a scientific knowledge about how to edit a historical source. And the volunteers, they transcribe and tag our material. And in addition, we discuss together with uh, researchers from the museum, the material from different perspectives. So we, uh, we speak about historical or political taxonomic problems, etc. And so we learn from each other. And uh, what I think, uh, what is the success, success of the format? That is the idea of lifelong learning. And that's why we are working with different kind of levels of the courses, advanced and for our transcribus expert that we have now uh, in the volunteer group, uh, we have the so-called segmentation group. Mm. I believe um, that uh, the volunteers are more likely to stay with the project if they learn something, if they get something <clears throat> in return. And I work now long term with about uh, 35 volunteers. And over the year, uh, we have a flexible crowd, about uh, 50 to 60 participants. Um, what I wanted to talk uh, today about is, uh, are the challenges with the tool Transcribus. As you all uh, know, the tool is dynamic and uh, that uh, change, that constantly change uh, causes uh, many challenges for our users, uh, especially in beginner courses uh, or for the elder users, for the seniors. Um, and, um, the next thing is that uh, the segmentation of the layout of the documents often has to uh, be corrected manually. And uh, therefore we had to create an extra group for this. Um, and I didn't know that at the beginning, I just started with uh, transcribus and then uh, we thought, oh my God, the layout is wrong. And <laughs> so we created uh, this uh, volunteer group and now they are experts. Um, and I'm really, really glad that I have them <laughs> because it's a lot of work to do. And um, yeah, that's because of the diverse uh, character of the documents. Uh, we have many uh, tables in there and many uh, different hands on one page. And uh, that causes uh, problems with uh, layout analysis and uh, baseline detection. Um, yeah, but to decide what should be, for instance, on one uh, text region, uh, you must be familiar with uh, the current um, handwriting and also the context, of course, uh, because the segment segmentation of the text region depends on the context. Uh, so it's a circle. Do you understand? Because we have on one hand side, we have to learn how to read uh, the handwriting. And on the other hand, we have to learn how to work uh, with transcribus. And since we are still learning, we are um, doing mistakes, of course. And uh, sometimes um, that, not sometimes, often, <laughs> this causes frustrations. And um, Yes, we have to deal with this. Um, the frustrations, uh, as I said uh, here, uh, must be supervised. And uh, that means a high investment of time from my side, but also from the uh, side of the expert group of the segmentation group. And, but I think uh, it's worth it because it's fun to work with uh, transcribus and um, it's the future as we heard before today. And yes, um, yeah, and we are working together. And so I think, uh, yeah, it's a good idea to work with the tool Transcribus um, because of other reasons too. And now I will show them to you. I um, pointed out here, summarized a few more key points. Um, for such a project. And if you ever plan a citizen project with Transcribus, then keep that in mind. Um, first of all, um, 
I see a difference between citizen science versus crowdsourcing alone, uh, because uh, we are dealing with the historical documents and we are speaking about the documents, but this is important to take them uh, correctly and uh, to annotate them correctly. And um, <clears throat> of course, it's a time investment to deal also with different levels of knowledge uh, concerning the German handwriting. And the technical aspects are difficult for many volunteers, as I told you before. But um, it's a positive challenge for students, as we learned. And on the other hand, many seniors have very good reading skills. Uh, skills. So I put them together in teams and uh, they are working very well together. And uh, another point is um, that you have to create an emotional connection to the project or to the museum, to the institution. And uh, <clears throat> this means uh, all of the volunteers want to be informed about what is happening with my work within the project. And so you have to inform them what is happening with the work. And um, I just uh, say the other uh, points, if you work online with a Zoom, for instance, you have to work with breakout sessions to build teams because I think um, the spirit of the group is important and you can create a spirit if you are working in teams. And um, the last uh, point is people want to have a result. And uh, therefore our next step is to publish the documents on the platform. And uh, we want to have a visible outcome that uh, the documents are not only available for the research project uh, in the museum, but uh, for the whole uh, world. And um, yeah, we want to uh, get to know the world, what we are doing in our project. And uh, yeah, I think um, that's all for today. So yeah, thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much for your talk. Yeah, crowdsourcing is obviously, or citizen science is a topic that's very important and increasingly so, because uh, pooling resources is one thing that the cooperative is about too, and handwritten text recognition as well, because as you know, creating ground truth or cor correcting uh, segmentation or whatever takes a lot of time and that means a lot of people. So do we have any questions? Uh, one second, Günther. So that the people online, no, no, the microphone, because otherwise the people joining us online can't hear, you know. Thank you for your talk. I uh, found um, a remark very interesting that uh, students and uh, probably sometimes retired citizen scientists are somehow working together. Can you elaborate on that? How, how is this really working? Um, uh you mean the practice, how we do this? Yeah, uh, it's, uh, it's, we have the beginner cross and there are students. Uh, so I'm a lecturer on the uh, University of Trier. And uh, so we have the students and uh, we invite the citizen scientists also. Most of them are seniors. And then uh, we have uh, the course about uh, how to read. Uh, the writing and then after um, maybe eight uh, sessions I introduce uh, transcribos and then we work together in teams uh, a student and a senior and uh, they have a project on their own and uh, as I said we work with breakout sessions and then we have um, uh, we, we meet every uh, week and in the beginning, we, ha we, have a, um, we have the session all together. And after a while, I've, I will start the breakout sessions and they work together and I switch from one session to another and uh, yeah, speaking with people about problems and whatever, yeah. Okay, one more question maybe. Uh, just to tell you that in Canada, I'm doing exactly the same. Uh, in the workshop that I have in every 
Wednesday in the morning. So in Germany, it's six hours after, it's two o'clock for you. So <laughs> we could do joint seminar, but um, I'm just thinking about the reflection we must have, you, Diana, and Nina too, about the time consuming uh, revision time, you know? Uh, and the way I, I did it is the, to, um, employ a student who was a very good uh, transcriber, uh, paleograph, to uh, a painter to revise the, the unclear of uh, the, 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 the transcription, first of all. And second, um, I don't know for the university, but we, we, we do have courses that are uh, uh, implementing trainees in the partner, partner. So for example, I have uh, right now a trainee that has supervised for his curriculum and he is doing 135 hours to the museum. Okay. And he is implant, implementing transcripts in the museum and in return, we transcribe the stuff yeah you see thank you so it's, it's a way yeah. of uh, because yeah. nobody has money so yeah thank you very much for